Okay, so in a terminal window, I have downloaded the Sova 12C zip files to my home directory. And for the purposes of the lab guide, I actually have an Oracle user on my Linux server or workstation. And here's his home directory, and inside his home directory, or her home directory, I have uh, both part one and part two of the Soa um, 12C distribution. So the first step here is to unzip both of these files. Okay, so once both are unzipped, we can go ahead and launch the installer. But before we do that, I want to make sure that you're referencing the right version of Java. By default, um, for most new Linux distribution installations, the default in Java is OpenJDK. So on my system, I actually installed Oracle JDK 1.8 and then updated my uh, path environment to point to that version of Java rather than the default OpenJDK version. So if you're maintaining both versions of, or both types of the JDK, Open and Oracle on your system and you haven't played around with your environment variables to, to preference one or the other, I recommend following the lab guide and, speci and specifying the fully qualified path to the Oracle JDK. So in my environment, this is actually a headless workstation that I'm SSH'd into. I've exported my display um, such that I can run the installer and it will be exported to my desktop, which happens to be actually a, an iMac. So. I will use the fully qualified path, even though it, the right version of Java is in my directory or in my path. So java-jar, and then we're gonna give it the this is the one that we want. There's two jar files, and we want the we want the first one. We want this one here. So if you get this check, I usually get this check when um, I'm exporting display and it complains about the number of colors. Uh, for some reason that doesn't come across. So you can ignore that actually and hit Y to continue. And eventually the quick start installer will launch. All right, so let me minimize that window. So the lab guide walks through each one of these screens in the wizard. Um, this is pretty straightforward, nothing terribly complicated here. You can get to the welcome screen, go ahead and click next. Um, if you wanna receive updates from my Oracle support, then go ahead and check the radio button. This would require that you have a, a Moss account. Um, so for development purposes, you can pretty much just leave this on skip auto updates, and that's what I recommend in the lab. Oracle Home. So I, in the lab guide, I mentioned, we talked about directories, and I mentioned that in the lab guide, we are, are using uh, a user's home directory. So we're gonna install in a user's home directory, and my user just happens to be um, Oracle. So it can be whatever user you want it to be. It can be your user. You do not need to create a separate user for this, um, for this lab guide. So go ahead and pick whatever user you'd like. You can install it in your home directory. You can install it anywhere you'd like. Um, if you deviate from the lab guide, just note that this path is known as your Oracle home. And this will be referenced throughout the lab guide. So for my... Uh, so in my case, I'm just gonna accept the default here and click next. So this is a very important screen. The installer is gonna run a series of checks on your environment to make sure that you've satisfied all the system requirements. 
And if you scroll down here at the bottom, I'm going to bring this up a little bit, you can see that it's checking the operating system configuration. And it was expecting one of these types of systems. And it did get a Red Hat system, just for some reason, it doesn't know which version. But you can see here that, that um, Oracle Enterprise Linux, Red Hat, and SUSE are both supported. So we pass that check. Um, I, if, it, if this were a Debian or Ubuntu, I, I do not know what you would you would expect to see here. So I recommend um, using a Red Hat based distribution or Windows or OS 10. And you can see here, uh, it also checks the Java version that was used to launch the installer. So it's a good thing that um, this, is, this is actually the bare minimum JDK 1.8 version that's supported, so 101, and we pass that 1, 1, uh, excuse me, 112 is the latest as of this production. So once you pass the checks, and if you fail the checks, you'd see a red X here, and it would tell you why, so you would have to go ahead and remediate that. But once you pass the checks, go ahead and click Next, and then you get a summary of what's being installed, where it's being installed, and how much space is required so you can see that we have about four, four and a half gigabytes of disk space being used for this installation um, and you can see all the different feature sets that the installer will install these are all the binaries that are being installed one thing you can see here is that j developer is going to be installed as part of quick start which is pretty cool um, one thing i do not mention in the lab guide is this save response file the response file is essentially, you, you're generating a script. So if you want to run a silent install of this configuration in the future, you'd essentially do that with a response file. So I don't cover that in the lab guide, but I just want to let you know that this feature is here. So once you've confirmed the summary looks good, go ahead and click install. So this part of the process certainly takes a lot of time on my system, so I'm going to fast forward so we don't have to sit here and watch it. Okay, so once you get through all the installation procedures, you should get a whole bunch of green check marks. Uh, that means you're done. So go ahead and click Next. And again, just a summary of of what was installed, where it was installed. There's a log file. Um, and then down here at the bottom, next steps, this is start J developer. We are not going to do that. So make sure you deselect that checkbox and click finish. We're gonna start J developer outside of the installation process. In fact, the next step is actually going to be, uh, is going to be to create a standalone SOA domain, and then we'll start JDeveloper and hook that up to that SOA domain.